prayers because there is a word from the Lord. And I, I was sharing, I was sharing with, with, with someone early this morning and I was telling you, it's, it's very rarely that I wrestle with God in a word because I, I'm a trained priest and I know the voice of God. When God gives me a word, I normally grab it and run with it. But this particular message, not only was I at the chapel, but I was at the chapel for a reason. Because I was like, God, I don't believe anybody needed this word today. And even sitting right here, I was sitting here, I was sitting here wondering, Lord, what is it that you really want me to say? And then out of nowhere, Sister Wade confirmed my message. Out of nowhere, it, 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 it just, even in her, it, in her talk, it just, and I'm sure it startled her because it just, it didn't even fit in the sentence. It just, I know my purpose. And when she said that, my spirit just quickened. And I said, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you who have your Bibles, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. To all of our preacher friends, both chapel ministers and our visitors, God bless you for worshiping here. I'm going to need somebody to volunteer to drive my car to Bassett because I'm going to sleep to Bassett. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 9, verses 15 and 16. If you found it, will you say amen? Amen. Verse 15 says, But I have used none of these things. Neither have I written these things that it should be done so unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make glory vain. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Turn to somebody beside you and say, neighbor. neighbor. Come on, talk to him. Say, neighbor. neighbor. God, gave God gave me a purpose. And I just can't help it. God gave me a purpose. And I just can't help it. God gave me a purpose, and I just can't help it. Jesus, move in this house today. Strengthen me as your servant. Work, God, in us, in our lives. Change us according to Scripture. God, let us be obedient to your word, to your will, to your way. Give us commitment, dedication. Call us, God, into the vineyard of labor. God, we thank you. You could have chose anyone. But God, this morning, you chose us. Thank you, Lord. Bless us as we study. In Jesus' name, amen. God gave me a purpose. And I just can't help it. God gave me a purpose and I just can't help it. This particular text, we see Paul responding to the attitude of Christians. Paul was responding to people who were questioning his purpose. Church folk. Walking up to Paul saying, Paul, you're not who you say you are church folk, folk who know what Paul has done. People who Paul had 
God had given Paul a ministry and Paul's ministry had worked for them and had brought them out. Once they got out, then they looked to Paul and said, Paul, you're no apostle. Because an apostle to them had to be someone who had been in the presence of a manifested Jesus. Paul was a man that even though he was not in the presence of the manifested Jesus, Paul had to have been in the spirit. There is no way that Paul could sit in a jail cell with an ink pen and a piece of paper and write a message to the church that today is still delivering folk unless he had been with the master. I know my purpose, Paul said. We've got to get to the point where when we know what it is that the Lord has assigned us to do, doesn't matter where we are, who we are sitting at the feet of, no matter how people look at us, when you know your purpose, you've got to get a I just can't help myself attitude. Because the text is so narrow that I'm trying to talk about, I want to broaden it this morning to the point where our, our spirits must be lifted. Now, I told you I had a hard time putting this message together. And I honestly believe that if I have a hard time presenting the gospel, it's because the hearers are going to have a hard time living what I'm trying to teach. So what you're doing in life is we're living our lives, amen, as a story that is to be told. Paul said, he said, now I know that y'all don't think I'm an apostle. And you all have not treated me right. Because I have come to you, amen, and given you the gospel. And most of you treated me bad. You don't talk to me. You walk over me. You talk about me in the street. Amen. I had to work, be a tent maker, work by day and preach by night. Uh, amen. But I'm not writing now to tell you what I did in hopes that you will make up for it. I came to let you know that the gospel has been appointed to me to preach. And whether or not you pay me, I can't help my because I've got a God to serve and I've got to preach it whether you like it or not because I know my purpose and what Paul was saying here he was saying that even though you may not understand me I fell in love with God and God has shown me who I am anybody know who they are so what you've got to understand is when you find out, Brother Brown, who you are, Satan then will start throwing obstacles in your way. When you make up in your mind that you're going to live for God, Satan will set traps in your way. Amen. What the devil is doing now is he's planning for July. Some of y'all have been working all year long in July. You made up in your mind that you're going to take a vacation. Well, Satan has allowed you to walk for a couple of months like everything is all right, but he's planning for your July. That's why when you go on vacation, looks like it should be a month of a week of splendor, but when you get there, your hotel is not booked, your car won't work, you have an unexpected bill. When you finally get there, your husband won't act right, your wife's got an attitude, and your children are just bad. It's because because the devil knows that if I can set up some things that when you get there maybe he can divert your purpose oh but when you make up in your mind that I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God oh, which is in Christ Jesus and so what we've got to do we've got to make up in our mind that I'm determined to run on to see what the end is going to be tell somebody I can't help myself I just can't help myself I can't help myself oh, I can't help myself so then there is a reason why some folk got it and there's a reason why some others don't it has nothing to do with your gift it has nothing to do with your job. 
it has nothing to do with your education some of us made it because we can't help ourselves because there's a passion on the inside and the passion that's on the inside will let me go through hell the joy on the inside will let me cry and still keep walking the love of God that surpasses my understanding will pull me anyway even when I want to go back the love of God constrains me I can't quit if I want to I can't stop if I want to I got a passion on the inside a passion on the inside that pulls so so what Paul was saying Paul was saying y'all ain't right but it's my responsibility to come in your wrongness and tell you about the rightness of God see I can't expect you to understand because it's not your purpose see what we're doing is we're trying to make imitations of us so we teach like we want you to be let me let me tell you about pulpits how much time I got today a lot of us as pastors instead of us preaching what God has given us we use the pulpit to to use it as a a, 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 a quorum where we a form where we try to get you to vote Democrat <laughs> or we try to bring up black and white issues <laughs> or we talk about African stuff <laughs> none of that is important in the house <laughs> because when I'm led by God <laughs> the word of God will make me live right <laughs> whether I'm under Republican or Democrat <laughs> if I give you the word of God <laughs> Uh, when I start living my life uh, in Christ Jesus uh, my Bible tells me uh, that there is neither male nor female uh, neither Jew nor Greek uh, so that means there's no black man or white man uh, when I start living like God should live uh, I see a red man uh, I see a man that's been covered by the blood uh, and if you've been covered uh, I can love you uh, no matter what you do to me uh, I can work with you no matter where you live because I know my purpose and when I know my purpose I won't stop until I get to the top I won't end until I make it over I won't go back somebody see it see it somebody that knows their purpose see it y'all standing up sitting. listen listen there is a tendency for us to become comfortable let me y'all sit in for me y'all make me hate myself there is a tendency for us to become comfortable see we gotta understand that God is delivering us from the bottom and as God delivers us from the bottom he takes us to another level watch you remember when you were down and out Lord if you deliver me I'll serve you Lord 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 if you just help me through this anybody been like me Lord come on let's, let's let me let me take you out of your sanctified self and take you back to your world itself anybody ever been so high amen so wasted so drunk amen that you said lord if you just let me get home i promise you i'll never do it again i wish somebody would talk with me here uh-huh y'all ain't never been there huh you ain't never been there okay let me come to where some of y'all live lord if i can just get out of this situation i promise you lord i won't let that never head big lip rascal come again amen anybody ever been there amen and so what the Lord does is he delivers us amen but when he delivers us we forget where we came from and we start getting comfortable again Philip Chapel let me speak a warning to you don't you dare get comfortable because you got a pastor now it's time to pray amen now it's time because the 
Lord has delivered us to one plateau. Don't get stuck in a rut because he doesn't want us to stay here. Some of us think because we got a good job, a nice car, our children have went to college, our grandkids are in school, we get comfortable. But let me tell you something. Don't you dare get comfortable because what the Lord is doing, he's getting ready to move you. Many folk can't be blessed by God because they won't move with God. We get stagnant. We get stuck in a rut because we try to please them. But I came to let you know that them can't help you. But I've got a God that's got a heaven for you. But many of us will never make it because we got comfortable. The comfortable. You don't pray like you used to because you got comfortable. You don't sing like you used to because you got comfortable. You don't worship like you used to because you got comfortable. Well, let me tell you why you get comfortable because you've lost your vision. You've forgotten your purpose. You got caught up in status quo. You think you're cute. All that. A bag of chips and a soda pop. But let me break it down, baby. You got a purpose. And God said that I laid it on you. And you can't get it off. When God puts it on you, you got to work with God. When God put it on you, you got to wait on him. He may not come. Hey, Lord. He may not come. I wish I had a witness here. He may not come when you want him. But when you get in your purpose, get in your will, he'll show up. Somebody say show up. When will he show up? He may not come on the morning train. He may not come when you need him. Look at somebody and say, I can't help myself. You know, people want to know, why do you do some of the things you do? Is there anybody in here that does some things for God that you don't even know why you do it? Somebody yell, passion. See, when you have a passion for a thing, the passion for the thing will draw you See, you have passed by some things that you used to play with because you got a... Oh, y'all ain't with me here. Yeah, I, I know we used to have a good time. Amen. We used to get down on the floor. We used to play, but God is pulling me away from some things. You wonder why folk are walking out of your life. No, baby, they ain't walking out of your life. God is pulling you from them. Amen. Because I know my purpose. I know what God is doing. And when I stand for God, God will. Anybody know he will? Anybody? know he will anybody know so now where many of us fail is here y'all up again <laughs> yes, let me talk to y'all y'all know we Baptist folk it don't take all that I know I made 12 of y'all mad <laughs> look what happens is brother Glenn is between my passion and my getting there, that's why many of us fall short. I know what my purpose is. Anybody know what your purpose is? Anybody know you got a purpose? It's just that your purpose ain't come to play yet. Look, I know I'm rich. I just believe God is saying, Tyrone, your check is in the mail. So see, all I got to do is live long enough. <laughs> see, when you know your purpose and you have not made it to fruition yet, you got to understand what God is doing in the interim. God is preparing you. He's got to take you through some 
situations that will equip you and secure your purpose. Because if your purpose is not secure, then they can make you abort your purpose. Dr. Wade, I'm not going to ask for three minutes. <laughs> Last Sunday, I believe I asked for three minutes for 18 minutes. But I, I tell you, I, I'm a weird preacher. And I ain't, I'm not trying to shout you. I want you to live better. When your purpose is anchored, it doesn't matter what they say to you. See, a whole lot of us, I can tell when your purpose ain't anchored because if they laugh at you, you get out the choir. You don't know your purpose. Uh, amen. A whole lot of us, when they don't vote you president this year, amen, and you've been a willing worker, amen, and they don't vote you president, and so next year you quit the organization, you don't know your purpose. Uh, amen. If, if you got to leave the church because they are all coming and you can't worship with them, baby, you don't know. With Christian folk, you can't work with a drunk. Baby, you don't know your purpose. If you can walk down the street and give a beggar a hand, baby, you don't know your purpose. Man, if you can't go to council behind closed doors with a single woman without touching her, you don't know your purpose. But I came to let you know that when you know your purpose, I let nothing deter me. I'll let nothing turn me back. I'll let nothing. Somebody ought to see it. See it. So, when your purpose is anchored in between here and there, I got to have two things. I've got to have Lavetta, Joy, and then Leon, I got to have excitement. Yeah. I got to have joy and excitement because if I let you tell me you made a good choice, in order for you to tell me I made a good choice, then you got to be the one to tell me where I got to go. Because the only way you can measure my success is you got to be the one that told me how far I can go. So a whole lot of you looking for them to pat you on the back. That means they are the ones that can limit you. No, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. You need to look at folk that's trying to tell you what to do. I tell you you're not good enough or you're not far. And you need to pull a coin from a fifth grader and say, whatever, baby, whatever, 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 whatever. And start walking in the newness of life. And let God be the one. Let God be the one. So, so in between, you got to have joy and excitement. That means in your bad times, still got joy. You know, folk going to look at you and say, um, you know, you know what they said about you? Now, now, you know, I ain't trying to stun them, but I don't, I just, I just want you to be aware. <laughs> see, see what the devil is doing is he's trying to abort your purpose. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I never lie from the pit. You know, your mama was a member of this church. And your grandma. And look at that. There your uncle's Willie's name on the stained grass. You know your mama, even though she did, she wouldn't be happy if you went to another church. A lie from the pit. Y'all ain't feeling pastor here. Look at him. Let me tell you what Paul said. Paul said, I'd rather die than stay here. I'd rather die than die here. I'd rather die than abort my purpose. I'd rather die than let you tell me what God can do for me. I'd rather die than go with God. But when God releases me, when God sets me free, Paul said, I'm not writing for you to pat me on the back. Paul said, 
I just wrote you to let you know why I keep coming back. Look, if you ain't got it by now, you ain't gonna get it. Don't you leave here the same way you came. Anybody in the chapel know what your purpose is? If you know your purpose and not doing your purpose, then you reach back and grab your purpose. Put your purpose in front of you. Put it in front of you and start following your purpose. Now understand, when things are going wrong, that's a good thing. When, when it looks like all hell has broke loose, that's a good thing. When you bring in your tithes and offerings and you serve in God and you have more month than money, oh, that's a good thing. When you walk on your job and they start, oh Lord, here he come again. See, are y'all with me yet? When, when folk walk up to you and say, what's wrong with you? You don't, you don't act like you used to act. That's a good thing. I wish somebody would help me in here. See, the devil, if he doesn't do anything against you, that means he's got you. That's why James said, count it all joy when you fall in temptation. Count it all joy when things go wrong. Count it all joy. So then that pulls back my joy. And then my mind races when I think about the goodness of Jesus. When I look back years ago and see what he's already done, the joy kicks in. The excitement keeps in. My passion rises. I get reconnected to God. I start coming out of some things and going towards some things only because I know my purpose. I just came today to tell you I know my purpose and I can't help myself. I came today just to let you know when you know your purpose when you know your purpose when you know your purpose come here Archbishop. when you know your purpose get connected to God. God is going to elevate you higher. He's going to pull you up, but you can't get comfortable because I don't understand God. God, I prayed that you deliver me, and then when you delivered me, now in your movement, I got to go back to the same state that I was in the beginning. Yeah. You got to act like you have not gotten anything from the Lord and go back to that same commitment, that same prayer, that same level of dedication. You got to always be humble before the Lord. Always fasting. Always praying. Because what you got now, that's nothing for the Lord. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. But you got to stay with the Lord. You got to stay with the Lord. You got to trust the Lord. You got to give the Lord your mind your body, and your soul. You can't stop now. See, like right now, the devil is trying his best to distract somebody. But I came to tell you today on my way to heaven that if you re reconnect with the God that called you, our right, churches, would you sing a little bit that the battle is not yours? Somebody today look like oh, everything is wrong. But it's not your battle. It belongs to the Lord. And today I'm making an appeal that if there is someone here today 
but it's not certain that the Lord is the Lord of your life. As we're pleading, will you step out of this hour? Right now, if you're here, will you come to Jesus? If you're here today and you don't know that heaven is your home, will you come quickly? But the Lord wants to do something he in your life. That's why you're here. He Maybe there's someone the Lord has said that this is where I need For to be. For all things work. It's not an accident. According to the Lord wants to the reach master's holy will. Will you come? No. Come. Maybe it's someone who wants to be. You're going through. Reunited. Would you come? Remember, God you is using you for the battle. Battle 
Somebody say yes to the Lord. Somebody say yes to the Lord. The healing power of the Lord is available for you today. I believe the Lord. I believe the Lord. I believe the Lord. If there is someone else that needs healing in your body today, as an affirmation of your belief, will you just cup your hands towards heaven and say, Lord, you know it's me. Lord, you know it's me. Lord, you know it's me. And Lord, I confess all of my sins. Right now, Lord, I believe that healing is for me. Lord God, I pray now in the name of Jesus, everyone, God, who made that confession, Lord Jesus, that you would be merciful. God, that you would show yourself alive in their lives. God, I'm standing on your word, and your word says, signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. Lord God, we are a solemn assembly. We've been called together because we believe. I pray, Lord God, that now you will show yourself, manifest yourself in these lives. Oh, bodies, God. Heal us, God, in Jesus' name. God, many other requests around this altar. God, will you have mercy on us? God, we still need. The devil is a liar. The devil is defeated. We, the righteousness of God, are more than conquerors. Lord God, would you put us back on the right track? God, many of us have failed. We've fallen short. We've made some mistakes that we've not gotten right. God, today, will you have mercy on us? God, we've done some things that while we were doing it, we know we were wrong. And we continued on and refuted the voice of God. God, will you have mercy right now on us? Forgive us, Lord. Give us now, God, that healing power. Lord, I pray now that as we leave this worship experience, I'm believing by faith, God, that someone has been changed. Lord God, I come as humble as I know how now. Believing, God, that we're going to leave this chapel with a purpose in mind, with joy and excitement in our heart, and a burning passion about what you've laid upon us. God, allow Paul to be our illustrated sermon. God, and then you bring back to mind what real love is. God, let us have a passion, God. God, let us have a passion like you had for us. God, because it must have been passion to allow you to be beaten by the Sanhedrin guards. God, you must have had a passion. God, to climb Golgotha knowing that that was your final place on earth and stay there. God, you must have had a passion. As you allowed them to wrap you to that old rugged cross, God, you had a passion to allow them to nail, God, nails in your hand and nails in your feet without you saying a mumbling word. God, teach us to have that kind of passion. God, for you even said in Luke that after you made it to the other side of the cross and you turned back after your passion, God, let us have that zeal for you that we'll go through whatever we have to go through, whether it's sickness, whether it's heartbreak, whether it's misunderstanding, whether it's lies, gossip, we'll go through it to please you. I'm believing, God, that you're going to allow us to go through without scathe, without hurt, harm, or danger. Lead us, Lord, to a rock that's higher than I. For it's in the precious, adorable, powerful name of Jesus that we ask this prayer. And everyone who believes that Christ is the Redeemer, shouted, Amen. 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 Touch at least three people and say, I renewed my purpose. I renewed my purpose. God bless you. It's not.